The Last of Us on HBO is tearing a hole into our souls on a weekly basis now, and as viewers started to pour in, I started thinking to myself, hey Nick, how can we get a piece of this pie? What kind of content might people want to know? And then my wife did all the work for me. She said, so like, what happens in the rest of the world? What's going on elsewhere? Now, one thing that's really cool is this week showed a bit of a flashback in the form of an Indonesian expert in the field of mycology being shown examining one of the first infected in her country. The process of inspecting the body and the effects the fungus had on the host were so terrifying her advice to the government was to bomb the city in order to prevent the spread of it. This was also mentioned as having happened in Boston during the initial outbreak of the fungus to slow the spread stateside. It would be cool to see more flashbacks and how the rest of the world handled the infection as it broke out as the series goes on. Now in terms of the source material, I've played the games a few times each and I could not for the life of me remember anything about the rest of the world being mentioned, so I got to sleuthing and today I'm prepared to tell you everything I could find about what's going on in the rest of the world. But let me set proper expectations. I'm not going to be showing you shots of Japanese, German, or Chinese cities being decimated by the infected. That level of detail simply isn't known. Instead, this video is going to combine some lore from the video games with speculation about the show and rational common sense. Seeing as the show has not dove too deeply into the rest of the world and neither has the games, it's up to us to review what supplemental material is out this. To do that, I checked out every single collectible from the game series, hunted down interviews with the directors, read comics, and anything else I could get my hands on. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Now keep in mind this video will contain minor spoilers for places, events, and characters, and I'll do my very best to not include anything that may be spoilerific enough to warrant your anger. After all, it's not too hard to not spoil shit. Much like within the show, in the game we know that crops from South America are primarily responsible for the outbreak of the cordyceps brain infection. While the patient zero is never identified within the series, it's safe to say that the cordyceps brain infection began there. Early on in the game, a newspaper clipping collectible shows that the World Health Organization estimated that as much as 60% of the planet was either dead from the infection or actively infected by it, leaving 40% of world population alive in various cities, settlements, or elsewhere in the wild. It's impossible to tell how far into the outbreak this clipping was, but presumably it's early on as the major systems of communication were still somewhat intact. After all, newspapers were still coming out, like imagine having to be that paper boy. Within the United States, we know of settlements or quarantine zones in multiple states. California, Colorado, Connecticut, Georgia, Massachusetts, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, Texas, Utah, Washington, and Wyoming all have scenes within the games. So it's probably safe to say that the series will visit all of these places as well. We also know from the opening credits of the game and some areas in the show that the original testing of the World Health Organization's vaccines didn't work, which indicates that the entire scientific community rallied behind trying to stop this infection, but was unable to do so, which requires a lot of, you know, communication. We also have promotional artwork that Naughty Dog's development team released that reimagined some famous areas from around the globe years after the infection took hold. And while these images are interesting, they paint a very limited picture of what may have took place in those areas. It's also not necessarily canon from what I understand. Within the trade paperback artwork collection released for The Last of Us, there was some promotional artwork inside that also gives us more information. I'm unsure if it's all considered canon like I said before, but this newspaper headline indicates that England had declared martial law similar to the United States, indicating that England was hit hard enough that they too had to isolate and create habitable safe zones with enforcement procedures. The same newspaper article also indicates that all attempts to establish quarantine zones in Texas and New Mexico had failed, and as many of you might remember, Joel. Joel's daughter Sarah and Tommy lived in Austin, Texas at the beginning of the show and in the game. However, seeing as Joel moves all the way to Boston, it's probably safe to say that the lower you go within the country, the warmer and more humid it is and less likely it is to find safe, hospitable zones, you know, because of fungus. Minor spoiler, but this fact is also evidenced by Santa Barbara and Catalina Island, which are featured prominently in The Last of Us Part 2. No story spoilers for what takes place there, but rest assured that there are many infected, which makes sense as it's warm and humid. 
There is also a decent amount of evidence pointing towards life continuing and flourishing in Canada, specifically Vancouver. There is a collectible from the game called Fairy Log that indicates a ship was en route from San Diego to Vancouver for trade. Now they never make it as infected take over the boat, but they did have radio contact with Vancouver indicating that life was present and thriving. Okay, another minor spoiler. In the show, we also kind of briefly met Robert, a prominent kind of smuggler dealer who was played by actor Brendan Fletcher. An artifact from the original game labeled Shipping Manifest has more evidence of Canadian life related to him. A handwritten note on a piece of engineering paper mentioned that smugglers were capable of bribing Fedra soldiers in order to get safe passage through the checkpoint. This note included mention of Canadian bison meat, which would have been imported as Canadian bison are... Let me check my notes here. Ah, from Canada. So obviously there are people in Canada capable of trading, hunting, and bartering, indicating that much like the United States, there are probably pockets of cities and settlements north. Additionally, it's probably safe to assume that due to the extreme cold in areas of Canada, it may be safer for longer distance travel as the fungus would have a harder time growing. Similarly, in another collectible called Tessa's List, you can find an image of Canadian whiskey, further proof that life had continued to flourish up north and they're getting drunk, baby. Now, that is every indication of life I could find within the games, which the show is heavily based upon. I do really like the concept of them fleshing out just what the rest of the world was doing during the initial stages of infection, as I think it paints a more interesting palette for the world. The games are completely based within the United States, so it would be interesting to see the protocols enacted in other areas of the developed world. And who knows, there might be a third part, and when that happens, we could very well see another area of the globe. And that is about it for me. This has been Nick from Key Issues. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Remember to like and subscribe and do all that other crap that YouTubers ask you to do. Thanks again for watching and remember the motto, The Last of Us Over Everything.